Good morning, good morning. I'm your host, Ty Sondaline. Co-host Carl Williams. And it's another lovely day in apartheid, Michigan. Yes, it is. The apartheid. weather is nice out there. It's going to get hot, though, later on. Oh, yeah. But until then, we're going to have it hot up in here. Apartheid, Michigan. Coleman Young would have been 100 years old last week, one day last week. Mm. And huh. uh, Amazing. He had a big, <clears throat> big article on him. Some of us okay. I should have brought my paper with me, the article, but we can talk about it next week or any time. Well, well, well then in uh, uh, yesterday's paper? No, no, about Sunday. three days ago, two, three days ago. Oh, okay. You know, over the Probably holiday Friday, weekend, you yeah. get confused on which paper it was in, what date, but I got it around the house. But ladies and gentlemen, when they talked about some of the things, uh, hotels, or well, lies they told about Coleman Young. One was he hated white people. And then he said, no, nah, he didn't hate white people. Oh, well, we know that because half of his administration was, was white. Yeah, that's right. And I'm talking about the department heads, the people at the top. His press secretary, white guy, for a long time. I don't, th I don't really, I'll recall his name, but y'all know who I'm talking about. But one of the things they didn't talk about in the article was when they got to talking about uh, different things that happened or Pole Town is one of them. They were bringing jobs in. They, meaning general, was supposed to be bringing jobs in with Pole Town. Plan is still over there, right there at the border of Hamtramck in Detroit. Still ain't created no child. So they just gave it a name, Pole Town. Now General Motors had a, a quite a few facilities around the city of Detroit. One was that Cadillac plant over there on Clark Street in Michigan. So the street is still there. They got another plant over there. I think it was a minority-owned plant, but. Uh, you got a lot of black sheets of work over there in that plant. Oh, yeah. And then they had Fisher Body, what they called the Turn State. Turn State, yeah. Yeah, eight or nine plants. So they had thousands of people over there. I don't know. It might have been 10, 15,000 people worked over there between Cadillac and them eight or nine Fisher Body plants known as Turn State. Now they shut all that down, even towed the ground, towed the plant, to all the buildings down. Yeah. Sure it is. So why they didn't build Pole Town over there? They didn't use the term gentrification back then. But they moved that whole community out. Thousands of houses were tore down. Oh, yeah. And that would be on the north side of the 94 freeway. Yeah, most of them was Polish because they had a little community there. Up you got to talk into the phone. To most the of that. Yeah, that community was Polish. They had a, a little community up and down Shane. Right. They had a bunch of businesses down there. Well, they had a whole lot of them. Uh, Matter of uh, fact, from dog from Canfield, well, past Canfield, all, all the way down Shane, they had all kind of businesses. Well, you didn't even Burnham. go downtown. The only time you went downtown, if it was something particular that you needed, like you wanted to get a special suit, but they had suits, uh, clothing stores up and down Shane. So, you know, you didn't really have no real reason to even go downtown. One thing, there was a lot of bakeries. <laughs> oh, sure. So, yes, buddy. Two, three bakeries every other block. That's right. And back then, they even had a Burger King, they had a hardware store, they had all kind of stuff. They had everything, you know. You, right wouldn't, know it, you wouldn't know it today, though. You would not know it today. And uh, I, I remember a friend of mine, a young lady says to me, oh, my uncle told me one day, this a few years ago, she said, oh, oh my uncle told me the reason we're all these vacant houses on the east side is because of the riot. <laughs> I said, your uncle so. don't know what he's talking about. I don't <laughs> know where right. he's from. Where was, he wasn't here then, evidently. Well, you know, that's the mantra they had been saying in the media, which was a lie. 
And uh, you only would know if you was around back then or you know somebody that was around back then. It, uh, that's, that's, <laughs> that's how history get mistold. Yeah, but those are, one of the, those are some of the things that people need to know. The young blood, the millennium, old school, didn't forgot about it. And there was a big outcry over that Plove Town plant. The white folks didn't want to leave. No, they didn't. Well, no, they didn't want to leave because they had the built up community and, you know, they had the, like you named, uh, 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 what you say, donut shop. They had about five of them. The bakeries. Yeah, right there between the expressway and back to I say Garfield, and they had some on the other side, but I know they had at least five from there to to the expressway. And they had them on McDougal. That's right. See, so, we don't understand. All those was built in jobs, you know, because they they didn't uh, they made the donuts right in the back of the place. Well, it's a bakery, yeah. Yeah, they didn't. You made know, it on it wasn't site. No, wasn't shipped in. That's right. What you're saying. Right. They wasn't shipped in. They didn't have to heat them up or bake them or nothing. Mm -hmm. They were made right there and put in. And some of them lived over the store. Over the store. Yeah, they had apartments over there. But see, that's one thing people forget about. Some never got it. They missed it. And that is the white folks didn't want to leave the city of Detroit. Oh, yeah, doing that. They called it the pole town. You can go back and read it. It's, it's in the papers. You can ask some folks about it. The Catholic Church even came out to fight it. Yeah. They didn't want to move the church. They didn't want to move the hospitals over there. They didn't want to move nothing. I didn't forget the name of the hospital. Can you remember? What's the name of that hospital over there off the boulevard somewhere? Off the book? No, I blame. Um, it was around oh, there somewhere. God. Somebody had called in. But Just, they, yeah. they, uh, you know, the city used eminent domain at that particular time. <laughs> and guess what, the ladies and gentlemen, that was against the law. Mm -hmm. But since it was jobs coming in, and so we thought it was jobs. That's the lie they told. Because they didn't create, create more jobs than they already have built in in their community. And so, people forget about that. And I have forgot about it until, you start talking about it, and I, you know, then you know things start coming back to you. Right, and and so that was tax-free money for General Motors, 25 years, no property taxes, and what other incentives they gave at that particular time. Now, that type of gentrification, moving the people out, kicked out the people paying property taxes. Because they tore that those houses down, put a plant in the place, a manufacturing plant, a factory, that didn't pay property taxes for 25 years. Mm -hmm. So the city of Detroit didn't get any property taxes. So that was a leg, a structural. When they talk about, well, this is structural. You remember you say that word structural. It's a structural problem on the taxes or a structural financial problem with the city of Detroit. Right. You're putting people out the city to pay taxes. So the tax base was eroded during the Coleman Young administration. That happened during his administration. Another thing that happened was very, very, uh, I call it deadly. It was like another death blow to the city. HUD was playing all the property taxes. Yeah. A whole lot of properties Went into foreclosure back well, back in the seventies, and the, they were on. The, they were there in the city. You talking about dirt cheap? Now they were dirt cheap. Oh yeah. People still didn't have the money to buy a lot of them. So HUD paid the property taxes. They sure did. They cut the grass. They shoveled the snow. Somebody broke in there and tore the door down or took the door off. They went and repaired it. Yeah. So all that stopped when somebody convinced the mayor 
of the bright idea the city needed to take over those hood houses and then they could sell it to people. People would be able to get their own homes at a cheaper price and they wouldn't have to be preyed on by these landlords. You know why I'm bringing it up? Don't we hear the same thing right now? Same thing. Aren't they running articles in the paper every day about unscrupulous landlords, but they never named Dan Gilbert as mm. one of them? No. They never say anything about Mike Illich as being an unscrupulous landlord. One little thing here in the paper, now and then they talking about it a little bit. Somebody got mad at them, I guess. <laughs> well, they got some new reporters that don't know you can't snitch on Mike Hillage. You can't snitch on Dan Gilbert. What's wrong with y'all? <laughs> Talking about what they're doing. Two of the biggest gangsters that they ever was. So the people, really, if you didn't qualify for a loan, how could you qualify for a free grant or just somebody give you a house for a dollar? They had all kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. To get rid of the houses, but it didn't work for most people. Why? They knew nothing about repairing or rehabbing a house. Yeah, you're absolutely right. They I didn't know they needed too. money to buy the water tank, even a used one. Yeah. So these are the things that the people ran into and still running into. Because more Detroit should be buying these properties. Yeah. They should be buying the homes. And I know what it is. They're not able to do the work themselves. And if they pay, they don't have enough money to pay a contractor. No, and especially nowadays, you know, because you, you're right. Uh, back there, I ended up getting a couple of houses, two or three houses. My brother was in real estate. I think I got one house for $1,000. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fixed it up. Like you said. I did all the work myself, painting, had a little plumbing that had to be done. I did uh, I did all that, and shoot, and in a year, I got my money back. Oh, yeah, that's what people have to do now. Most, most Detroiters don't realize it, it, the new place to be is not Southfield, it's Detroit. And it's kind of strange since history repeats itself. Why are, are Detroiters running out to Southfield? The declining community running away from Detroit, which is the rising community, <laughs> which is the one on the rise, Seems like on the all, incline, huh? We always do things backwards, huh? Well, we're chasing the white folks. <laughs> oh, oh. And we think it is. Uh, Southfield's almost 60%, 70% white, not black now. Yeah. So I don't know what they're doing. They man is in the pay. We'll take a call. Call has been waiting a while. Caller, you on the air? Hello? Caller? Well, maybe they just listened. They took a break. Carl, are you on the air? Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. How are you? All right. Uh, don't forget about Percy, the gangster that took over Bell Isle. <laughs> they said they had a lot of problems. They wouldn't let the people on the island. And they had. They think it had something to do with the preparation of the um, races is taking up all the territory. So, therefore, they can't sit that many people on the island because they don't want them, I guess, to be, uh, you know, venturing off into the tracks. So there's your other gangster. I think the hospital you might be talking about is Henry Ford. Was that the hospital you're talking about, Henry Ford Hospital? Henry on the Ford. Boulevard? No, that's another oh, that wasn't hospital, it? I think. Oh, okay. So you had mentioned something about a hospital on the, on the boulevard. What did you say the name was? She said Henry Ford. Henry Ford. Oh, no, no. This was on the east side, east, east Boulevard. Oh, another side. Okay, well, I don't know the other one. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, uh, yes, uh, the Polonis and the Hospital, that's what I was talking about. The weapon, uh, the, they uh, weaponizing the water to shut off to uh, shut people out of the city. Because that's a real good way of getting rid of families and communities. It's like they break the school over get rid of the family and the community. You know, they do it with the water, the gentrified, genocide. They done stole the pensions and they're constantly stealing the tax dollars for corporate welfare. 
So all our reparations and restitutions are falling into the hands of the mob, and they have uh, organized and strategized, and they're getting away with everything. Uh, and we still have an open our eyes. Thank you for taking my call off. I've been listening to your show. Thank you for making Thank it here. Thank you. <clears throat> you know, what was that? Uh, let me see. The property taxes cut out. That That's amazing how CUD was paying all the property taxes on the vacant homes. And they figured that wasn't a real, that wasn't a good deal. It was better for the city not to get the property taxes. No, that's insane. Uh, isn't that real strange? That's what happened. And that's what that's not the way it was presented, but that's what was that's what was happening. And uh, you know, then the downtown development authority rolled along in seventy eight. That was before hmm. Mayor Young was voted in. What was he voted in? Seventy four? No, right after he was right voted after in. That. Anyway, right right in that period of time. Yeah, right after, because he was in 74 with the new city charter. And uh, businesses downtown did not have to pay property taxes. So the people downtown, Hudson's, the Crowley's, the Renaissance Center, the gas company at that time, the Bull Building, all those people downtown, the Dimes, the, none of those property owners paid any more property taxes to the city of Detroit. <laughs> wow. The Renaissance Center has never paid one dime in property taxes to the city of Detroit. So without this base of property from the commercial community, the downtown the community, they pay more property taxes because their buildings are worth more, isn't it? That's right. Isn't that how it goes? That's, that's the way it's supposed to go. So they get away with paying no property taxes. And then you want to know why the city is struggling like it is. And I, I used to get in that conversation with a lot of people, especially uh, my cousin that was the re retired police officer for the city of Detroit. And it took years before he realized that the citizens of the city of Detroit are the one carrying the city on its back. That's right. Senior citizens. That's right. Welfare folks, welfare mothers, that's what y'all like to call them, welfare mothers. Low income, the folks working in the restaurants, the McDonald's, all of those people that pay their taxes, their income taxes to the city, work in the city, pay their rent to some landlord, because they live in the city if they don't own the house. And the people that are homeowners, that pay the property taxes, are the biggest supporters of the city of Detroit because they are paying the most money. That's right. The poorest people, I know you're going to say, no, we not. Uh, the big time folks downtown pay, we just told you, the property owners, Dan Gilbert, who has the majority interest in those 100 buildings downtown that he gets for free, aren't paying anything for them. He didn't pay a dime for most of those pieces of property. No, no, no. They won't even show it. That's public record. They didn't want to hide it. Well, they Nazis, aren't they? Oh, yeah. A bunch of Nazis didn't talk about Hitler, what Hitler do. They're doing the same, same thing. thing. They're doing the same thing. So then... You have the gentrification. <laughs> you know, gentrification, by definition, is for poor people. Not black and white, but poor. Poor in the lower economic class. That's gentrification. So the fact that they swept the brothers up in it don't mean a thing to it. Because <laughs> <No. laughs> I know y'all still scratching their head about Pole Town, the white folks didn't want to leave. They went to court, and yeah, it was did. a big argument. And they went to that court. They had court suits to last for ten years over the fact that they didn't want to move out of their homes. And it's a so-called community. They named Pole Town because of the fight. 
That's amazing. And the white folks didn't want to leave the city of Detroit. Mm. You never hear that one, though. No, no. You, they, you, they don't talk about it because it might get you to thinking and be able to see what's going on right now. You know, when you build up your, 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 a community, which people always talk about community, but I don't think they really truly understand what a community is. When You know, they had their they own jobs, their own home. And their own little they businesses. businesses, all of that, you know, and they generated jobs for themselves. They didn't need need no uh, factory because they created a lot of jobs among themselves through small businesses. You, you know, Carl, and ladies and gentlemen, it's amazing that we have to stop, really, and think about what happened. And you may say jobs, and, the, you know, they had these conferences these the you know the this the black business conference. I just put it like that. I ain't gonna say the black businessman. I don't even know if the Booker T. Washington Association even show up back then. But in the sixties and seventies, a lot of blacks owned party stores, but the main one was the record shops and barber shops. Oh yeah, record shop, barber shops, gas stations. Gas stations. And with the record shop and the barber shop they were able to live. No doubt about it. They had a, a uh, maybe made a, a decent living. Look, and I'm a living it. witness. I worked in the barber shop, and my brother down at the mosque, they, uh, two doors down, they bought a, a little storefront, and they were selling records. And they made most of their money off of stockings. Oh, yeah. They made more money off the stockings than they did the records. <laughs> Well, that's how it go. You know, you got to have something that you see. That's what the Arabs doing, aren't you? The Caribbean. That's right. That's they right. Got more, they got clothes in the in the uh, stores. In the, uh, <laughs> they have clothes in their uh, gas stations. Yeah. You, you would say, hey, you just coming. <laughs> <laughs> they got everything you want to sell in there. Gym shoes, sandals, T-shirts. Well, you know, we hats. used to do all that. We used to. Because uh, Brother Jesse's Barbershop. It was huge, you know, and I worked in there, young, shiny shoe, and in the back, it was so big, they had a cleaners. So they would they were home delivering uh, clothing. They would pick up the brothers and sisters' clothes and deliver them, and then that's how I got my, my other job. Okay. I, you know, they didn't have time to, Leon, he was... My oldest brother, he was working for DSR Plus, had his building, and he had his uh, brother Ben. I think he worked for the city. And, you know, and they was trying to do too many things. So that's how I got uh, my uh, first job, really, going around, picking up the clothes and taking them back to the uh, cleaners. It's still a remnant of the... The barber shops left. Mainly, the black women have surpassed, I believe, the, the barber shops with with the beauty shops. Yeah, doing the hair. So it has reversed, but it's still there. And uh, it's a lot of jobs that blacks, as businessmen, were doing for themselves. Car dealers. It was that Ed Davis, wasn't it? Ed Davis, Davis had that yeah. uh, Chrysler dealer. Right in the city of Detroit, the Elmhurst. Center was the Ed Davis dealership back in the day mm -hmm. on the west side, city of Detroit. One thing I want to mention it before we move on to something else or the callers. In the article when they talked about the hit a mile road speech he gave on the <laughs> yeah. and it's in there. It's in the paper. That's why I said, well, maybe I'll bring it next week if I can people of the article, that he talked about people that didn't want to live in Detroit. He told the criminals to hit Eight Mile Road. Right. He wasn't tolerating criminals, black or white, even in cap they had on uh, blue suits with, uh, with the badges. He said all criminals hit Eight Mile Road. So he was referring to the police, and they got red, they were yeah, hot. Man, they were hot to trap, boy. <laughs> <laughs> and white folks was hot about him talking about the police. But we know. Now, see, he knew it. 
What they didn't like about Coleman Young, he would tell you to your face. face. He <laughs> wasn't doing no scratching and shuffling and jiving. No, he's a real man. See, that's the whole thing they like about Coleman Young, former mayor Coleman Young. And he knew they were selling drugs. The police. Oh, yeah. Yeah, most people didn't know, but he knew. And a whole lot of people, it wasn't like people did not know. People knew, and we told you that it was Marzette. Marzette was the yeah, black Marzette, lieutenant yeah. on the Detroit police force. He was a lieutenant that brought the drugs into the black community. It was weed, the penny caps, the heroin. Oh, yeah. See, when you put this thing together on what they didn't like about Coleman Young squealing and dropping the beans on who was actually bringing the drugs in, coded, he said criminals, he said it with the badges and the blue uniform. Yeah, yeah. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> he did everything but call their name, didn't he? Yes, he did. Okay. So there's, there's a lot of things they didn't like about Coleman Young as he fought to keep the city afloat. And, and Coleman Young pushed the tax increase. He just came to the public, to the citizens of Detroit, and said, look, in order for us to keep this city, you see what they done done, we don't have the money. They're not supporting us. We, if we want the city of Detroit, then we got to pay for it. That's right. Put through a tax increase. They had to go to the voters. The majority of black folks voted for the tax increase in the city of Detroit. And see, one thing I need to point out that you just mentioned, Coleman didn't lie to you or come to you with some kind of scam to raise taxes. He just came straight out told you why we need the taxes, and that was it. He didn't play no games. And that's why a lot of people really admire Coleman Young because one of his famous <laughs> phrases was, when he be negotiating, what's in it for me? Yeah. And he wasn't just talking about himself. He was talking about the city of Detroit. What's in it for me? Which but you never hear nobody talk. Say that. You never hear nobody talk about that. But just sitting here, uh, listening to Hassan mention some of these things, a lot of these things come back. And I remember that was one of the, the major things that they, they disliked him for because he wasn't just giving away the city. He wanted to get something out of it. That's a fact. And there were some buildings that were built under uh, Coleman Young, it's, it's funny that, uh, what's that, what other buildings, those uh, apartments downtown on the riverfront, was it three of them down, what do they call them? You talking the about riverfront, riverfront Plaza, Plaza the, yeah, uh, you know it, where they know, yeah, it. I know the what Max you're Fisher about. Apartments, that Blue Cross Blue Shield building, one of those was built under his administration. So there were things that were built Buildings downtown during the Coleman Young administration. Everybody know about the Renaissance Center. Yeah. But maybe they don't even know that was built during the Coleman Young years. And the people and how he got along with the Republicans. Mac Fisher was a Republican. Uh, Multi-millionaire, billionaire Republican. What's the other guy? Um, Fisher. What a builder. I'm trying to think. He went to prison. He's out. Just died recently. Oh, it'll come to me. You see, he's a builder? Yeah. But it, 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 it'll come to me. So he got along with the business community, and uh, he got along with some Republicans because he got along with Bill Milliken. He didn't get along with Governor England. Right. But he got along with Bill Milliken, and he had fights with the Democrats because the Democrats wouldn't give him any money. Jim Blanchard. Jim Blanchard That's was right. governor. Governor Jim Blanchard would not give the city of Detroit any money. Coleman Young didn't support him. And it was almost like <laughs> Blanchard was banished from the Michigan yeah. Democratic Party. He never anybody mentioned his name. Oh, well, when they do, people don't know about him. Mm -hmm. They don't know about how crazy the man was back then. And so some people just as crazy now. Oh, the other thing before I get away from Amazon. 
he had an article on Amazon last week in Amazon, in the Detroit News about yeah. Amazon and how one of the scenes they had that coded. I mean, that was really cryptic. You thought you was reading some kind of secret message in the paper, <laughs> the way they talked about it. One of the reasons Amazon didn't come, and that was the way it looked to me, is one of the major reasons. Uh, the, de the Republican Party broke their deal as far as Amazon was concerned. Remember when Granholm, Jennifer Granholm was governor, and she had those incentives for the Hollywood, the movie makers, the movie makers were coming in. Oh, yeah, to the city, yeah, Detroit, yeah. Detroit, Detroit area, making uh, movies. Movie, yeah. Which one is that? Uh, I started calling it Star Wars, but it was, uh, uh, they wasn't the Terminator. Which one of them, uh, the movies was shot downtown here in Detroit? I think it was. The, uh, What's the other one? The Predator. Predator. Was it, was it oh, the Predator or the Predator? The Terminator. But well, one of those movies was up. shot downtown there, yeah, right there at uh, right Grand Circus there. Park. They call it Campus Marshes. You know, because you see the monorail in it and uh, well, them robots and stuff. They know who it is. I get them mixed up. <laughs> yeah, you, <laughs> you know, I should have remembered I, I that. I get them mixed up when I get to talking about, because they were talking about the one side of the moon or some of that stuff, so it might have been uh, uh, whichever one of them robot movies. But they were fighting. So... When when Snyder got in, when Gangster Snyder got in as governor, he cut that. Yeah. He just he just dog Grand Home out, Governor Grand Home, he cut that out. Allen Park went bankrupt. Well, they didn't go bankrupt, but they got in the financial difficulties with that. Or was that Taylor? I think it was Allen Park that had that um they had a whole setup over there. Like a warehouse they put together for the city to bring yeah. in, had a lot of the modern equipment to make movies. And uh, so Snyder got rid of it. Yeah, because they had a uh, on site right downtown where the old courthouse used to be. And they was go. matter of fact, it's, it was in a couple of movies. And I'm trying to, I just well, can't remember the, the uh, which one it was. But yeah, that that would, you can you imagine what a uh, lift that would have well, gave you on doing it? Yeah, if they had a got you know they was an incubator, and if they had a kept on, Detroit would have been on its way. Southeast Michigan would have been on the road with a lot of folks coming in, you know. And to show you how crazy they are, they got rid of something. This is the Republicans when he got in, Snyder. Like Trump, he wanted to get rid of anything Obama doing, mm -hmm. anything good or bad. Anything that Obama did to help, he wanted to get rid of it. That's the President Trump, and that's what Snyder did. So now Amazon said, hey, wait a minute. You, you, you broke your commitment. In so many words, they know what happened. They broke their commitment. They said they were going to give, give these business people to come here the tax break for 20, 25 years or whatever. It was a little different there because they didn't have any physical buildings. But they talked about it. So this man throws us out. Governor comes in. I'm the governor. We're going to change the law. So now you think Amazon is going to spend all them billions of dollars, <laughs> hundreds of millions of dollars, and get an actual plant, a factory there, and some bonehead governor comes in here and says, we not, we not, I'm not going along with that deal. We're going to change the law. Or, you know, they can change the law. That's what they did with. Jennifer Granholm legislation or the legislation that they put in when the Democrats under Granholm were in charge. So this is the thing. These Republicans don't honor their word or their contracts among white businessmen. You know they're not coming here. Oh, they gave them a little, uh, a little factory where they hired out of the Livonia. They're going to give them something else, a little warehouse. But they're not putting no headquarters in here. Mm -mm. Why would they? Why would they? And they got these snakes. Well, we know they eat snakes in a barrel. But you didn't look. And I'm saying, wow, somebody got, is really mad at Snyder. But what they're doing is they know he's uh, out. He's term limited. There's nothing, he, they, he, there's nothing he can do to the Detroit News, so they're dropping a dime on him. It's mm -hmm. <laughs> dropped a dime on the man. Carl, are you on there? 
Hello, caller. You on the air? All right. Oh. Hmm. Well, call us right back. Caller, you on the air? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, go right here. Oh, how about two fine feather friends doing? Okay. Uh, that hospital you were talking about on the East Grand Boulevard, let me load this TV, uh, was called St. Joseph. Okay, okay. yeah. Yeah. And uh, I think I got some information that the retirees have a meeting uh, once a month at this particular building. I think it's 500 Woodward where we can where retirees can go and make comments at regarding their pension and uh, kind of like keep an eye on it. And uh, one other thing, there was another officer, police officer, that was kind of hooked up in that thing, uh, kind of like Marzette, but this is more of a modern-day thing. I think his name was William Wright, and I had a friend that was hooked up with him. Say that so name again. Of, uh, different ways that uh, people, uh, you know, do things to supplement their income. And before they came out with that lottery, there was a lot of money circulating through the numbers. You know, my friend's uh, father had uh, numbers and his son would drop off the numbers and they made a pretty good living. They also opened up a store. So I just wanted to say that and uh, I'm going to support the, the uh, television station so y'all can get more time. Uh, y'all the best thing on TV, really informing the people, you know. So uh, keep up the good work. All right, All appreciate right. That's it. Thank you. <clears throat> Call absolutely right about uh, the numbers. People, and then uh, we're going to have to do a um, story on that because. Uh, but you got to remember the numbers were illegal. Yeah, they. They were illegal <laughs> to a, a certain extent. <laughs> well, they weren't paying any money, no taxes. The so taxes. They, so so they, that's, that's, see, what it was, they didn't know how, once they found out how much money was being generated by the numbers through the black community, then they 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 wanted to get their hands on it. Oh, they yeah. They wanted to stop it because, you know, you got to realize that, uh, they used to have stu they used to say and they still say it. They still do studies on the black community. And back then they couldn't understand they wasn't giving you jobs and there wasn't a lot of things that are happening now just wasn't existing then. They would, they couldn't understand well how could blacks still be existing and, and thriving and with all the pressure that we're putting on. Well, we generated money in our own community. We didn't go everywhere else. And saying, you got to realize one thing back then, it was racist and it was overt racist back then. Money circulated in the black community back in the day. It didn't leave no. after one time. It Stayed might have circulated five times. or six times. It circulated quite a few times Quite a back few then. times, shoot. And we're going to 1030 today. We're going to 1030, ladies and yes, gentlemen. Yes, we are. Going to 1030. Let's take another call. Carl, are you on the air? Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Dynamic How are you? show. Thank you. And hey, Larry. Um, question. What's his name? His name was Bob Berg. Coleman yeah, Young's. Right, uh, right. Bob press, Berg. Robert Berg. Oh, press secretary? Yeah, the white yeah. guy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, white folks, guy. Folks, they, folks thought that... Uh, White people didn't work for the city. When Coleman Young came in, he took Come a room and pushed them all out. That didn't happen. No. He was hiring white folks. We had Italians folks. over there at DPW, um, you name it. Well, most Question, of how, what, two, I have two questions because I've been listening for a while. One, what happened to, like, Coney Gardens and, like, the lower west side over there by Milford and Beechwood around in there? Because those were all black businesses. They were black what? Businesses. You know, black you know, neighborhoods black that were thriving. Yeah. I, you know, Coney Island, I mean, I think Coney Island. <laughs> but uh, Coney Gardens. Coney Gardens. 
Yeah, that was a real nice neighborhood. And they had uh, a lot of jobs in that neighborhood. But uh, you never really, I just, you know, never even thought about it until you just mentioned it then. The schools. You want to okay. know what happened? The schools closed. You know, we, you know, I'm glad you brought it up. But we don't want to look at reality, the schools, not the drugs. The drugs was a, a, an important part. The drugs ravaged the community, ravaged the neighborhoods, but the school where it still exists, you had people with jobs. Once the school closed, you cut out 30,000 jobs across the city. And we keep talking about we want jobs. I don't hear nobody say we want jobs anymore, do they? Mm -mm. But when you open up a school, you have a job. You know, this, this lady that's running the school board member up in uh, Pontiac, I got an email from her. She's running for, I don't know what, District 27 up in Pontiac. I don't know what they sent me an email for, but they're talking up. And she was saying how she fought for the schools. We got to keep the schools open. It's jobs. Now, how can the people in Pontiac, one school board member in Pontiac, know that? And these hmm, crazy people down here in Detroit on the school board don't know it. This man has been here, VD has been here a year, yeah. hadn't done anything. Oh, I got my team together now. That's all. And then do. he wants to put, he wants to take, uh, uh, pay the money so private uh, uh, children that support these private charter schools can get on the bus. And that's something. That's, that's um, ridiculous. Well, it's go, it helps to close the schools in the neighborhood. They want to help Betty DeVos. Well, maybe y'all need to understand that. And we need to say the Betty DeVos schools. Yeah. Uh, maybe that's what we need to call them, the Betty DeVos schools, since they don't know what a charter school is. Trump's secretary. The Trump schools. Mm -hmm. Betty DeVos school, no different than Trump University. They went to court, had to pay them. The people said, we ain't learned nothing in Trump. He's a fraud. That's right. Trump University is a fraud, and they got paid. They went to Betty court. Betty DeVos has uh, um, a lot of those private loans for that uh, young people have trying to go to college. She has a company. You know what, they are, they have us all confused and messed up. Oh, yeah. We want, they have spent years, they have spent the last 50 years, meaning the government, trying to convince black folks, white folks, poor blacks and poor whites, to get credit cards. <laughs> and we think we have arrived if you got five or ten credit cards. <laughs> Even if they give it away credit cards, oh, yeah. debit cards. Folks, they ain't got a job. You can get a debit card. You send it to the mail. Oh, well, we yeah, got a hundred. We got twenty five dollars on it. We got a hundred dollars on it. But the whole thing is, we don't know anything about the depression. Our grandfathers and mothers lived through the depression, and some of our fathers and mothers told us what they told them about the depression. And what does that mean? People wouldn't put the money in the bank. That's right. And folks, so what them know old day, we almost went into a depression right here, 208, 209. Talking about the good old days. No, it wasn't nothing good about it. Anytime you don't have anything to eat, no food in the house, and they come out with the commodities and the welfare program and the, what, CC camp, uh, uh, what is that, Civilian Conservation Corps. And all they did was plant trees. They wanted the people to feel like they was working, the white folks especially, so they gave them jobs, the government. Now all of a sudden, it's something wrong with the city of Detroit or the Detroit Public School giving its citizens jobs. Oh, but then we black and not white. Is that it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go, go ahead, Dee. Okay, no, I'm going to let other callers call in. But thank you for such a great show. Oh, thank you Bye. for calling. All right, bye bye. Isn't that something? They, you're on the air, caller. Good morning, guys. Good, Good morning. morning. Uh, I'd like to split for just a moment. Is the water 
still under that opt out or not. What you say? You say opt out. What is the opt out? The opt out was when we could notify the water board or sewage and water, whatever, and let them know that we wanted to opt out of the smart meter oh, yeah. installation. Uh, Is that null and void? Well, I don't know. I, Frankly, I, I really don't know. I would think it's not, but with Gary Brown and these new people, they don't want you to... Uh, they want you to have out. a smart meter. It opt out is still, uh, you still can opt out. Mm -hmm. And what it used to be, it used to be that you would pay, uh, want you to pay sixty nine dollars mm -hmm. plus nine dollars uh, extra. extra a month mm -hmm. on your bill. Mm -hmm. It's still there. They're not talking about it as much because. Uh, a lot of negativity has been uh, brought about about a lot, you know, with the waters, with this uh, drainage fee and all this other stuff, so they don't talk about it that much. But, yes, you can opt out. Okay. I'm glad to know that. One other thing, as far as our schools are concerned, because I was there in the schools, especially at Northeastern I was on the east side, and we had all of the vocational programs along with commerce, college prep, the whole shaboogie. And that's exactly what they shouldn't have removed. To every financial manager that came in here at the meetings, Elmhurst and wherever, that's what myself and another couple of friends of mine stated every time. There's no need for a redo. Put back what you took out. There was nothing wrong with the wheel. Take your spokes out and let it run and for these parents now there is a bit of a little contention with me being a single parent get out there and see exactly what your children are going through we stayed in their faces we made sure our children were taught and then we had lessons at home. That's the key. And they've lost that now. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you. Thank you. You're absolutely right. They did have all those vocational trades right there in Northeastern because I also went to Northeastern. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we will be going to 1030. We're going to take a break in a couple of minutes at the top of the hour. Mandatory of a, a communication break. Federal communications got to take a station ID. ID. Mandatory at the top of the hour. 